Twinmotion has been a program of choice for many designers to visualize their architecture, engineering, and construction projects. And now even with products showcasing from schematic design all the way to a finished deliverable. With the latest installment of Twinmotion 2023 comes an updated user interface offering a clean and organized experience for you to do what you do best, design and visualize. My name is Tyler and I'm going to walk you through some of the basics to the new interface. Whether you are a seasoned Twinmotion Pro from previous versions or trying it out for the first time, this version will be a breeze to learn. Opening up Twinmotion, we're presented with a home screen or hub, giving us options to start a new scene or open a previous one. With a new project, you now have a few templates to choose from based on the style of visualization you want. I'm just going to start with a blank scene to get us going. As you can see, the Twinmotion team has definitely been hard at working rethinking the user interface, and the whole point of this is to be more intuitive and organized to work in, less hunting for features as most everything is presented to you up front. Before we jump in, one of the new features is changing the UI's scaling, opening up preferences and appearance, increasing our interface scale to 125% will let us see everything a bit easier as we go forward. While we're here, we can also adjust various quality levels for different rendering features to help optimize your system. Plus adjust a variety of other options in the settings panel to fit your needs. We'll go over some of these in time. Front and center is the viewport to the new default scene that houses a stone sphere on a pedestal, which serves primarily as a central base point for you. There are some helpful graphics at the top for how to navigate around the scene. You can even select the gear icon to select a different navigation preset style based on your likings. You can hide this by selecting the quick view icon at the top right of the viewport and selecting the bottom option. The left panel is the library, which houses all the plethora of content from vegetation, lighting, Quixel mega scans, vehicles, and more. We'll dive into this panel as we move forward, but you also can view some helpful statistics about your scene on the side as well, which could be helpful to optimize your system. The right panel houses our scene graph, which is our breakdown of everything within our scene, along with a properties panel below that displays all the settings and information associated to a selected item or container in the scene graph. The scene graph is where you can organize any asset in your scene however you choose. You can group assets in a group container to keep certain assets isolated together, as well as opening up various options per asset, giving you further editable and organizing control. Our top container here in the scene graph is Ambience. Ambience has everything to do with the visual representations that are affecting our scene. Environment is where we can alter the time of day, weather, location data, setting up an HDRI backdrop, and more. Camera lets us adjust the in-editor camera settings such as field of view, depth of field, and vignette. This doesn't mean you're locked into these settings for exporting rendering images. We'll cover rendering and exporting in another video, so stay tuned. Rendering is where you can alter these settings for real-time rendering or path tracing. These are also available as quick links in the top option bar along with a few choices of path tracing quality options. And lastly, the FX tab is where you can adjust the in-editor color grading. If your scene graph or properties panel becomes too long and you don't want to continuously scroll, you can alternatively choose to dock these panels side by side or simply hide or unhide them from the icons in the bottom right. If you have an asset selected, you can even view and edit its coordinates manually by exposing the transform panel with the XYZ icon. You can also expand the top ribbon panel for quick transform edit options for a selected asset. Our last option in the bottom right is the view sets panel where we can assign different assets from the scene graph to a specified set, much like grouping them together for visualizing different alternatives within our scene. The lower row of icons are for additional management, design, and deliverable docs. Import allows you to import a custom geometry such as an FBX or OBJ, as well as establishing DataSmith direct links to other design programs such as Revit. Even importing custom landscape height maps such as this one I created in World Creator. And lastly, the option to import point cloud systems from your photogrammetry or LiDAR scans. The materials dock houses all the materials that you have added to the scene from the materials or Megascans libraries from the library on the left. 
as well as the location that allows you to create custom materials for your project with varying texture map options in the properties panel, including importing your own custom texture maps by expanding the details option for each material setting. You can even add your edited or custom materials to your user library so it is always available for you in future projects. Populate opens up a panel which allows you to paint anything from the library's vegetation folder onto a surface. Just drag plants or rocks from the library into the paint window, adjust the procedural settings per item, then paint away to see your results. Additionally, you can create walking paths for characters, bicycles, vehicles, and more. Plus, with the urban panel, you can add real-world street, building, foliage, and landscape data to your scene to help localize your project. If you don't like the results of anything, don't worry. It's all non-destructive and you can edit the settings at any time by selecting the appropriate vegetation, path, or urban containers in the scene graph that are automatically created for you. The media dock is where you create and organize all your rendered media such as images, videos, panoramas, presentation sets, and phasing sets. We'll dive deeper into the media dock in another video, but at its essence, for each media type, you simply click the plus icon to add a new type of media, in this case an image, which is based on where your in-editor camera is located at the time you add a new image. Then the properties panel adds a new tab, the image tab, for adjusting the format type or the rendering type of the media. Additionally, whether you are creating an image or video, each media type item lets you adjust any setting with the ambience per media type. For example, creating a new video sequence at this camera location in the morning, and perhaps this camera location for the evening. Hit play, and we can see a smooth time lapse of our scene throughout the day. The last dock is the export dock, where if we have created any media from the media dock, allows us to export that media with various formats and further refinement options if you choose to do so. The latest installment of Twin Motion 2023 is a great leap forward in not only a new organized user interface, but a newfound freedom to express your creativity and designs easier than ever before. This software is still under development, so some aspects to what we have covered and will cover in this series may change, but I'll be sure to cover all aspects of the software as development continues so you don't miss a thing. Thanks everyone for watching. Come see me in the next one.